To all who come to this happy place, welcome. G'day guys, Disney Dave coming at you once again from Down Under with another book review. Today we are taking a look at the newest book from Disney historian Didier Gez. It is of course the second volume in his They Drew As They Pleased series. The Hidden Art of Disney's Musical Years. Now, Didier is producing a series of six of these books. Uh, there's one coming out every year. The first volume came out last year, second volume this year, so on and so forth. Each uh, volume in the series will cover a different era or decade of the Disney Studios, uh, right up until the early 2000s. This volume here, the second volume in this series, is covering the 1940s. And as you'll see, it is subtitled Part 1. This is the first of two volumes which will cover artists and artwork from the Disney Animation Studios in the 1940s. Now, if you've been following my channel, you will have seen that uh, about a month ago, I held a Skype interview with Didier all the way from the United States, uh, uh, where we chatted about his inspirations for this series, and also uh, he divulged a few behind-the-scenes stories from this one book in particular. If you uh, haven't gone around to checking out the interview, I really highly recommend you do because Didier is full of incredible insight and uh, the passion and love that he has not only for the Disney studio but for his project is palpable and uh, he's a lovely guy and it's a, it's a really good uh, interview it's a really good watch um, and uh, he's got some really interesting things to say and I think if you love Disney as much as I do or as much as Didier does that's a really good interview to check out and, and get a little idea of his insight into the making of these books. Um, now I have just got this in the mail today so I want to do a really quick video on it. I've of course seen it, uh, Didier sent me um, the uh, manuscript of the book uh, in preparation for our interview uh, a couple of months ago now and I've browsed right through it. I've, I've, I've I've spent hours looking at this book and there is some incredible stuff in here and I'm really happy to finally get my hands on a hard copy of it. So uh, we're going to have a very quick uh, flick through the book. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book. I don't want to say too much about it because uh, what I've had, uh, what, what I want to say about it I've pretty much said in the other video and uh, Didier has said for me in the other video as well. So once again head over and check out that interview if you're interested in this book or in this uh, series or just interested in what Didier has to say full stop. So we're going to head over to the desk over there and we're going to just have a very quick uh, peek through the book. I'm not going to show you the entire book because I want to leave a little bit of magic. For those out there who are hoping or uh, considering purchasing this or the first volume of the book, um, I don't want to spoil everything. I want to leave uh, a lot of magic to you guys out there. Just like me, uh, when I first br uh, when I first went through it and uh, experienced all this artwork for the very first time, I need to leave that magic for you guys. Okay, so uh, let's head over to the desk and we'll have a very quick peek through this. All right, so here is the book. It is, of course, they drew as they please, the hidden art of Disney's musical years, the 1940s, part one by Didier Gez. Uh, I really love the picture on this. This is concept artwork from Peter Pan. This is a, a piece of art that hasn't been seen for many, many, many years, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's a really, really nice cover. Um, this is the back here. We've got some artwork from Fantasia, the Night on Bald Mountain sequence. Uh, there's some great stuff from this sequence in the book. It's one of my absolute highlights of the book. Uh, what I really like about these books, uh, Didier did this with the first uh, uh, book in the series as well. You've got this really nice print on the actual book itself with these nice sketches of, uh, of characters from these films. Let's just take this, sl uh, this sleeve off and put that over there. Um, there you go, you've got these really nice pictures under the, uh, under the sleeve there from the films from various artworks. So I'll have a very quick peek through this book. If you have the first one, you'll be very well aware of the kind of work that uh, is in Didier's books. Just across here. Um, basically what these books are, are a series of unpublished artworks. So th this is pretty much probably about 90% 
um, unpublished artwork. So a book that's never been seen by the general public before. A lot of it Didier finds in the, um, uh, you know, collections, family collections, uh, the collections of the Disney archives, all that kind of thing. So really all these places that are out of the public eye. I'll move that because that's getting a little bit annoying. Basically, what you get with these books too is a write-up on um, a particular artist. So, Didier likes to focus on a series of different artists um, for his series and then presents their artwork over um, a section of the book. So, uh, for this volume, uh, Didier has chosen um, Kay Nielsen, Sylvia Holland, Retta Scott and David Hall, as well as uh, some work from Walt Scott as well. So this is basically what you get throughout this entire book. The book runs at uh, just over 200 pages long. The third volume in the series which will focus on the uh, character, uh, character animation department will, uh, I think, is, is a little bit longer than these books. Now, Kane Nielsen's work on Night in Bald Mountain is some of my absolute favourite work in this entire book. Look, there's all this write-up on these artists, and in most cases, there's not a lot of information about these artists outside of this book. Uh, so, <clears throat> Didier personally met with uh, family members and, and friends of the artists and got inside information um, on the artists and uh, found personal notes, all this kind of stuff, so we could write up a really, really nice biography on each of the artists. Now, as I said, this is some of my favourite work in this entire book, and it was some of my favourite stuff to discover, so I don't want to spoil too much of that. I'll give you a quick skim of what to expect from this book. It's absolutely beautiful. The artwork is stunning, and if you've been a Disney fan for as long as I have, or even longer than I have, um, you would wonder why this artwork has never made it out to the general public ever before because this is some of the nicest artwork I have ever seen from the Disney Studios and it helps that it's from my favourite era of Disney animation like this Alice in Wonderland um, artwork is, uh, is by an artist David Hall and it's unlike anything we've ever seen this is more like the original illustrations from um, the original novel uh, than any of the, uh, you know, sort of the Mary Blair stuff that we're so used to seeing. And of course his work on Peter Pan, which made it onto the cover as well. As I said, I don't want to spoil this book too much, so I've given you a very, very quick skim through it. It's a really beautiful book. The artwork is fantastic. The write-ups on these artists is amazing. If you want to know a little bit about these artists, this book is definitely the place to do that because there's not a lot of information out there on these particular artists in here. And Didier has had uh, basically uh, complete access to anything and everything he wanted to for this book. As I said, family members, friends, notes, everything like that. And uh, he's been able to put together the it together an incredible compendium of artwork. And you sit back and you go, wow, there's going to be another four volumes of this. This is also, I'm going to give you a sneak peek, some gorgeous artwork uh, by uh, Sylvia Holland for Fantasia as well. This is another uh, highlight for myself, which again, I don't want to spoil. Uh, so that's all the kind of stuff that you're going to get in this volume, as well as uh, there's some really great concept art in here for a version of The Little Mermaid they were working on in the 1940s, which is a not that often talked about production from the Disney Studios. So it's really nice to see some of that artwork surface for the general public for the very first time. So that gives you a very brief idea of the book. If you want to know more about it, check out my interview with Didier on the channel as well. And uh, I know I've said that a couple of times and I'm sure I'll say it again in this video as well, but uh, it's going to give you a really good insight into this book. And uh, there's more to say about the book, but I've, I've said everything that I want to say in that video and Didier has said a lot for me as well, as I said before. So that's the book. You definitely should check it out. Um, let's pick this up. We'll grab the, uh, the dust cover as well, and we will uh, head back over to the bookshelf for a very quick wrap-up. 
All right, so that just about covers it for once again. They drew as they pleased volume two, the hidden art of Disney's musical years, the 1940s part one. That's an absolute mouthful. This book is incredible. This series is incredible. Didier, the author, is an incredible person who has so much love for this series and for the artwork and for the, uh, for the history of Disney animation. As I say in the interview, this artwork is, is meant to be seen by, by the fans, by people who love the artists and the artwork and the films. This is where it's meant to be. It's something to be hidden in someone's, uh, you know, attic for 70 years like it was. Uh, this book is right where it deserves to be. And it deserves to be on a shelf amongst some of the greatest Disney uh, history and art books that have ever been published. So I'm really excited. I'm going to put this book on the shelf. And it's going to sit right next to... Uh, we're going to move a couple of pop vinyls first. It's going to sit right next to Didier's very first volume of the book, right here. There we go. Oh, that looks absolutely beautiful. And what I really love about this is that it's just, the style has remained the same. There's a uniformity between these books. Imagine when there's six of these books side by side, that's going to be absolutely awesome. And that's what I love about these uh, old Walt Disney Animation Archives series books as well. They, uh, <clears throat> there's a uniformity to them. It's a, it's a series. And what I absolutely hate is when someone does a book series and uh, they change the spine or they change something about it, um, and it just, it, it goes out of order. Same with DVDs and stuff. Uh, but that's a really nice uniformity on that. And, um, yeah, when they, like as I said, when there's six volumes in a row, that's going to look absolutely fantastic. It looks great on the shelf. Well, thanks again for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you do want to, uh, if you do want to get your hands on the book, go ahead and do it. Um, Amazon US is selling it for about $40 US at the moment, which is the regular retail price. Um, I picked it up on Book Depository for $40 Australian, which means uh, it's a very, it's a much cheaper option. It's probably about, uh, it's close to probably $35 US on Book Depository. So that's probably your cheapest option to pick this book up. Uh, for international people like me, Book Depository it has rapidly become the cheapest place to get books, especially big, luxurious, hardcover artwork sort of books like this one. Um, so head over to Book Depository and place an order. But if you uh, want to go through Amazon, then go through Amazon as well because they've got stock as well. Amazon, the very first volume, they had an incredible special on it about six months after its release. Uh, very, very cheap. I think you can pick it up for about $10 US at the moment. So, you know, if you want to wait out and get a special, you know, that's up to you. But personally, for me, I really wanted to... Uh, I wanted to support this project that Diddy has got um, and you know the more support that he gets the more that he can really do with this series uh, you know the, the more uh, the more he can get access to the more you know basically support the series that's what I'm saying if you want to get this book get it now just as I did and I'm really happy it's sitting there on my shelf now and I've supported this really fantastic series of books and I really want to see it run its six book course which it definitely will because these are absolutely fantastic so uh, once again please check out my interview with Didier on the channel I'm putting the link down the bottom and also in the description as well so head over and check out uh, my interview with Didier he is full of all this insight on behind the scenes of the book, behind the scenes of the studio, the artists, absolutely everything. And it's a must watch. Uh, until then, for me though, I'm going to sign out. Do me a favour, hit subscribe on the YouTube, hit like, wait, other way around, hit subs, no, this way around, which way is the video? Subscribe on the YouTube, like on the Facebook, whatever way it is, I'm a bit confused. Uh, but hit subscribe on the YouTube, hit like on the Facebook, and uh, support this channel. Um, we're getting a lot more hits lately and a lot, and a lot more viewers, so uh, it's it's really shaping up to be something that I really, really want it to be. So uh, I hope I will see you in the future, and uh, until then, guys, have a magical day.